What are you up to now then? Um, I was just going to top this uh, MG engine that we just built up with oil so that we can start it. Is that alright? Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's fine. Which oil are you using? Um, what, what's, I'm not sure what's I that? dare answer that for the fear of breaking the internet. Oh, they'll be okay. Should we go inside where it's warmer to uh, answer that question then? That sounds like a good idea. Okay, I might keep my hat on though because I'm in serious need of a haircut. We'll see about that. Okay, so yeah, we've decided this year we're going to try and do a few more uh, frequently asked questions, FAQs. So it's going to be a little bit uh, tricky because obviously everybody's got a specific question about their car, their engine. Um, and every now and again we're going to try and sort of generalise that question to, to give an answer out there just as a um, FAQ. So today's one um, we think might break the internet because it's what oil should I use in my Rover V8 engine? which is a question that is often asked on Facebook forums, uh, etc. And um, obviously always gets hundreds of replies, but generally loads of people saying this has been answered before, etc, etc. Um, lots of different views, um, you know, Joe who owned a V8 once when he was 18 and sold it two years later, might have run a different grade oil to Bob who had a TVR and put Mobile One in it because that's what TVR said to do. So this is our answer. And we're going to do a basic answer for you and then a slightly more technical one off of a bit of research we've done. So the basic answer. Um, we use and guarantee all of our engines with Valvoline VR1 2050. Now I've worked with RPI now for getting on for 20 years. It's the only oil we've ever used and guaranteed our engines with. We've built, coming up to now, 3,000 engines supplied lots more on top of that as well because there was a stage obviously where we were buying engines directly from Land Rover they didn't need modifying if they're going to a car they just wanted a standard engine so they just got shipped out so you know we've not just supplied a couple of engines and run them on this oil it's we are talking thousands here and obviously when people phone us up and ask this question this is the oil we recommend so um, we also know that our engines that run on dyno test cells for 23 hours a day and are pretty much tortured and run at extreme temperatures all in the name of um, testing catalytic converters they run on a 2050 grade oil as well with a uh, good zinc additive in it and we get the privilege of stripping those engines down after they've been tortured um, for getting up to 2000 plus hours on a dyno test cell um, I believe the equivalent of 150 to 200,000 miles in terms of wear on the components and, and cats certainly and when we strip those engines down that have run with this grade oil in there they are perfect inside um, no visible signs of wear on the tappets or camshaft which is obviously an area in the Rover V8 engine that really generally suffers um, and that's a testament I think to uh, a good zinc additive and the correct grade oil of 2050 Another thing worth mentioning is oil filters and frequency of oil changes. So we always use genuine Land Rover oil filter. They're not expensive. I think they're £12 plus VAT off the top of my head. Lisa will probably correct me on that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that they, there's a filter material in there, obviously. I've seen videos on the internet of people cutting through filters showing the difference between genuine filters and, and, and cheap aftermarket ones. And there is a big difference between them. Maybe that's another video, Steve. Maybe. Um, frequency of oil changes. We recommend every 5,000 miles you should change your oil. It just flushes everything through and replaces the detergents that are in the oils, which we'll touch on in the technical section. If you're not doing 5,000 miles a year, we recommend changing oil every year. Again, it just flushes everything through, replaces those detergents that are breaking down inside the oil. So a kit car or a, a TVR or a Morgan that might only see you know, 1,500 or 2,000 miles a year, just before it goes away for winter, change the oil out, get rid of all the, the bad deposits and everything that have built up in the engine. Okay, so slightly more technical, in-depth look here, off of some research that we've um, been doing on this. Obviously, we, I am not a chemist of oils, 
Uh, I'm sure you could go far more in depth than this and there will be people out there that may even comment on this video with such information. But this is just a bit of a more in depth look than, um, than what we've already said. So a lot of modern engines have specific requirements making looking for the right API ratings and ACA, A, uh, EA specifications really important for warranties etc. They also obviously have really small oilways feeding dual overhead camshafts. You've got small turbo bearings that require really thin oil to get around there. So turbos are spinning at 20 plus thousand RPM. Um, Rover V8 has none of that. So again, this classic 2050 weight oil, some mineral oil, um, which we'll, we'll touch on again in a minute, um, does what we need it to do because we're talking about an engine that was designed well before my time. The last produced Rover V8 engine that was sold in a vehicle, I believe, was a 2003-2004 Discovery 2. Although saying that, Morgans and things might have gone on from that, but obviously that was Land Rover based. But the tolerances in that 2003-2004 engine were exactly the same as what they were in the early Rover P5s, P6s, MGB GTs, uh, the Range Rover Classics. Nothing changed in the hydraulic tappets, oil feeds to the rockers, mains and big end bearings, clearances, nothing has changed. So um, there's no need to run a really modern oil because you bought your car in 2003 and it's a, a more modern engine than what um, your two-door Range Rover Classic is. Okay, so um, oils don't just lubricate an engine, they also clean an engine. So they have detergents and dispersants in them. The detergents uh, remove combustion deposits from internally inside the engine and also then the dispersant holds them in suspension and that's what's responsible for changing the nice golden uh, hue colour of the oil when you first pour it into your engine into that sort of darker brown colour and then eventually black. So um, changing your oil frequently to um, replace these and actually take those deposits out is uh, what we're talking about in terms of frequency of oil changes. So changing the oil every 5,000 miles or if you're not doing 5,000 miles a year changing it annually so getting the engine up to temperature flushing the old oil out topping up with new ones uh, new oil means that those uh, any uh, combustion deposits are actually it, that are suspended in the oil uh, are no longer in there and the reason that's important is because some of those deposits um, can be acidic so the oil also has uh, corrosion inhibitors in it as well and again they break down over time so replacing them uh, is a good idea as well before a car goes into storage um, or just as a service item every 5,000 miles. The internet has told me many many things but I'm pretty certain we told you to stop looking at those web pages. Uh, one of the things they told me is that synthetic oil is better than uh, mineral oil. Those pages huh? Are they right? Um, okay, so synthetic oil is a man-made oil from mineral oil. Uh, it was designed for many reasons. Um, one of those being that it will perform better under higher temperatures that a more modern engine would see, uh, certainly turbocharged engines and things like that, and also for longer service intervals as well. Um, so a lot of modern cars these days are, uh, have service intervals of 10, even 15,000 miles. Uh, between them and obviously an oil is uh, going to break down over that time so fully synthetic has properties that will uh, help resist that breakdown in the oil. We're not interested in longer service intervals or anything like that. We want to flush your oil through, replace those detergents and dispergents and the um, anti-acidic uh, properties of it. Um, a regular interval on an engine that was designed for a mineral oil. You could also question if the real reason for these longer service intervals, where a fully synthetic oil would be more appropriate, possibly, whether those longer service intervals are simply to tick boxes for efficiency and cost of servicing on modern cars. Um, which again, we're not interested. What we're interested in is looking after, loving and caring for our Rover V8 engine. Okay, 
so zinc additive, mentioned it um, earlier on in this video. Um, what's actually referred to when zinc is mentioned is zinc dialkyl... Steve's going to have a go. Uh, zinc dialkyl dithiophosphate. Which is far better than Google did when we asked Google. She had a right slur on. Um, so that was invented for use in mineral oils uh, as uh, anti-wear uh, ingredient. Um, commonly known as ZDDP, known as ZDTP when it's used in synthetic oils. Uh, in there as an anti-wear ingredient, however in the mid-90s when all cars started being produced with catalytic converters it was found that the zinc additive shortened the lifespan of a catalytic converter. So they then started to phase the zinc additive out in more modern oils. So that's not good for our older engine that really needs that anti-wear uh, additive in there. Um, because it enhances the protection on startup, um, because we're using the correct grade oil, which is obviously thicker. Uh, it helps keep all the molecules together under extreme forces as well. So having a good zinc additive in the oil, at the high quality level, which the Valvoline VR1 has, is key as well for a long-lasting engine. Now, all of this information uh, hopefully has been uh, helpful. Um, again, we're going to try and do a few FAQ videos throughout the year um, and uh, hopefully people will take on board what we're saying and it is our opinion and that's what people phone us up for. They ask us, you know, what oil are you going to run the engine? Um, this is the oil we recommend we use and um, for sure, as I said at the beginning, someone else might run something else and recommend it to you and if they're happy to guarantee your engine on that oil, that's fine. We're happy to recommend all of our engines on this oil.